All right, guys, we got a special one for you today. As you can see, movie star, television star, ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Supley. Thank you for joining us on Zero Dark Nerdy, man. Ryan, thanks for having me. And I'm very excited because I love the name Zero Dark Nerdy. So I know this is going to be fun. The film, God is a Bullet, in theaters, June 23rd. Tell us a little bit about it. So um, I I think of all of the movies I'm in as though they uh, are basically created around the perspective of the character I play. So like My Name is Earl was about this guy with a brother making up for shit that he had done in his past, you know, um, and uh, God is a Bullet is about a satanic cult that kidnaps and does really deranged things to young women. That's what the movie's about. And I'm the... I'm one of the main henchmen of this cult. So you play gutter, right? Yeah. Tell us, tell us a little, I, I mean, I don't want to, I've seen some of it, you know, I went and I watched, um, you know, the screener or whatever, but tell us a little bit about the character, at least just to give the fans an idea of the type. Cause we've seen you play a bunch of different characters. So tell them about this one. Gutter is really the second in command of this cult. They're all kind of captivated by the main dude and, and gutters like, goes back with him the longest and and he's like the muscle and the the evil satanic spirit of it and uh he he gets stuff done you know that's pretty that's... pretty intense scene towards the end um, yeah yeah <laughs> that, that that uh you know we won't give too much away but you know i i think let's let's talk a little bit about nick cassavetes right this is second time you worked with him you worked with him in john q He's a director with such we, range, right? We actually did another movie okay. that never came out called okay. Yellow. We did that uh, maybe five, uh, 10, 10 plus years ago. Right. Um, and he wrote Blow. So I've known Nick right. for 25 years, and he's one of my best friends. And, you know, uh, there were years where we worked out together every day. We yep. went to the gym together every day. And I heard about this a long time ago. And, you know, you never know how long it's going to take somebody to make a movie. And a lot of movies that directors that really reputable directors want to make never get made. And so it's kind of a miracle that he was able to do this. You know, it's a hard R movie. It's not a soft R no. movie. It's not an <laughs> R movie because somebody says F once too many no, times. It's you know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to swear. You on absolutely. You can say whatever you right but like you know you you, you drop an f-bomb i think you get like one f-bomb in a pg-13 movie you do two f-bombs and it's r yeah. right this yeah. is not this is not r rated because of a second f-bomb yeah. this is really brutal subject matter and you know it's not a lot of people want to make those movies and and especially with a guy who's got artistic integrity like nick nick's not going to compromise and that's why nick's so good yeah well that was that was kind of what i was gonna say i mean the guy's got such range right he goes from a movie like this to you know the other end of the spectrum he's he's doing the notebook right i mean right but it's it's i think the one thing that he's probably known for is just intensity right i mean even notebook has its own sort of style of intensity with the john q a movie like this so yeah just very interested about hearing about working with a guy like nick to your point that's just so sort of steadfast about his craft and how he wants to make films some of the best direction i've ever gotten was in this movie we did yellow which I, I, last I talked to Nick, that was going to come out at some point. He had finally gotten the rights to it, you know, that was tied up in in some legal stuff and he had the rights to it. So maybe people get a chance to see that. But he he told me to um, to be still. And there was the scene I was doing and and it and it just gave me a different perspective on acting in general right i'd been acting for 15 20 years at that point and then this guy who's a good friend of mine gave me a little bit of direction and, and it just was so different than any direction i'd ever gotten and it was truly some of the best direction i've ever had and you know nick is nick is a guy who's going to talk to you as a person but he's also 
was an actor and is an yeah. actor still. And so he understands how to communicate what he's thinking about a scene in a way that sometimes could be more difficult for other people who, who aren't approaching it, who don't have any idea what an actor's really go to going through when, you know, you got a director who comes in and just says, do it like this. And like, this isn't communicating with me what you want. Nick's sure. going to break it down emotionally for you. You know what I mean? He's going to yeah. tell you what he thinks you're experiencing um, or get you to that place. It's really cool working with him. It's always a treat. And there is nothing Nick could ever ask me to do that I would say no to. That's awesome, man. All right. What's next? I know you got some TV coming. I know you got some other movies. Just want to kind of highlight those for the fans. Yeah, I just had a movie come out uh, or premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival called Blood for Dust. I have another one coming out later this year called Manodrome. Um with Adrian Brody and Jesse Eisenberg. And I just got to do a, a movie, which it was one of my favorite experiences ever. Uh, there's these two comedians who are, are truly two of my favorite comedians, Stavros Halkias and Bobby Kelly. Do you, do you know those guys? I, I know Bobby, Bobby. So Bobby played my dad. He's only five years older than me <laughs> for real. And he played my dad, which we got to <laughs> tease him about quite a bit on set. And Stavros uh, played my brother. And it's a movie about Stavros being, you know, basically it's, it's going to be a hilarious movie. Um, What's the name? Exit statement. All right. Exit statement. That's that, one that, that, you know, that, this is one of those things that could change that the name of the movie could sure. change 30 times, but look for Stavros, how yeah. he is starring in a movie. I'm in it playing his brother. And, uh, and it was, you know, some of the most fun days of acting ever because I I've worked with a lot of comedians and it's so nice to just, you know, you got a lot of downtime and in the downtime, you're just laughing nonstop yeah. because they're, they're so entertaining to be around. Um, it was a real treat working with those guys. I got two more things for you. I know we got to get you out of here in a couple minutes. I just want to give you a chance. The American glutton podcast. You've been doing it since January, 2020. There's almost 200 episodes. You're obviously on a podcast right now. Our fans love to listen to other ones. I just want to give you an opportunity to plug that a little bit. Yeah, that was something where um, my buddy Kevin Connolly started a podcast yep. studio and he kept asking me to do a podcast and I thought I have nothing to talk about, but I'd been, you know, basically on a diet for 20 years or 20 plus years. And I knew a bit about that. And I was at a place where I felt good about my weight and I, and I, ha and, and so I thought I could do a podcast about that. And, and it's been really helpful. It, you know, it helps keep me accountable. And if it helps anybody else listening to stories of what other people are going through or, very, you know, we talk, we try to talk to all kinds of people about all kinds of diets because there's, I don't believe in a one size fits all thing with yep. diets, you know, something might spark interest in somebody that's not really going to work for me, but that doesn't mean I don't want to hear about it. That's awesome, man. I know we're out of time. Look, man, I just want to say one thing. We've known you for 30 years, man. Ever since 1994, Boy Meets World, we, we've, you know, my fans, myself, the age I am, I'm, I'm 41. We've almost grown up with you, man. It's just been an honor to have you on Zero Dark Nerdy, and, and we appreciate it. And we just wish you nothing but the best moving forward and keep just doing great work, man. We love you. Uh, it's been my pleasure, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Thanks, man.